All right, so here we go with our first um, lecture on cell growth and division that will cover mitosis and why cells need to divide in the first place. Okay, so I believe that is the, the uh, first question is why do we even need to do this whole cell division thing? Well, we already know that living things are made of cells and cells come from cells. So cells have to have a way of replicating to make more of themselves to obey the laws of the of what we see with uh, cells from the cell theory. Uh, there's other reasons, really good reasons, that cells need to divide. Um, one of those kind of comes from the idea that everything's made of cells, but they're made of lots and lots and lots of little cells. You know, why are cells so small is, a, is another question. For example, a human is trillions and trillions of cells. That's a lot of cells. So why do we have to have so many cells and why do they all have to be small? Why couldn't they just be all small, you know, fewer cells that are bigger? Well, there's some good reasons for that. <clears throat> one is the idea of DNA overload and the other one deals with material exchange. So the first one, the idea of DNA overload. We know that DNA, all cells have DNA. DNA guide, guides the growth and function of the cell. However, if a cell gets too big, its DNA can't keep up with demands of the cell uh, genetic needing instructions. It's like if you had a manager at a place of business and if there were only five workers, they could all go and ask the manager, what do I need to do now? But imagine if there was a hundred workers or a thousand workers, you could not have that manager manage a thousand people all at the same time. It just wouldn't work. So it's no different with the cell with the nucleus handing out genetic instructions. It can only hand those out so fast and that then limits the, um, I guess, the effectiveness of that nucleus to regulate only so much activity that's occurring within the cell. So if a cell gets too big, it cannot keep up. Now, some cells, now this is a good point to point out that all cells are really different and there's always these little exceptions. A good exception to this is muscle cells. Your muscle cells are really, really quite large for a cell, long, long muscle fibers, right? They can be you know, multiple inches long. Their way around this is to be multinucleated. So each muscle cell, for example, has many nuclei on it to deal with this issue. Um, most cells just go ahead and reproduce and have then have two smaller cells, each with their own nucleus to deal with its own internal information needs. So DNA can't meet the needs of a large cell, but it can on a small cell. Okay, so the other example is material exchange. So this goes back to the cell membrane. Okay, cell membranes are selectively permeable. They let some things through, some things not through. Um, big materials have to be moved through on purpose. So with that in mind, cells need all these materials. They need to move these materials out. They need to bring these materials in. They all have to pass through the cell membrane. However, they can only do so at a certain rate. There's kind of a limit as to how much you can move in and out. Um, the demand for those materials and the amount that can be moved, they cause limitations to the cell's growth. Not only based on how much things you need that you can bring in, but what about waste products that you need to move out? Okay, here's an example. Let's say that if we've got 15 people in this classroom, and there's only one door um, and the bell rings, sure that the students have to leave through that one door. Um, and that kind of holds things up a little bit. But what if we increase the size of our classroom um, by quite a bit, but we only, and we add maybe another door. So we've got two doors, but now we've got 40 students. Well, you've still slowed down the whole process. Even though you've added more doorways, you've added many more students. This is exactly what happens as cells get larger. And we can quantify this idea that as a cell gets larger, it gets less able to move materials in fast enough or out fast enough to meet its needs. Okay, the, the idea that we use to quantify this is the surface to area and volume ratio. So a ratio is a comparison of this to that. Um, we can compare the surface area of a cell how much area is on the surface, on the outside, that's where the cell membrane would be, to the total amount of internal volume, right? The volume, how much space it takes up. More total internal volume means there's more organelles, more chemical reactions going on, 
and thus a much greater demand for materials. So what we see here, see if you look at this diagram, um, if we have a small cell, we can calculate our surface area to volume ratio, which would be six. But if we go bigger on our cell, we then have a surface area to volume ratio of 1.2. Bigger is better. This means like the six here would, going back to my example a little bit ago, is if we had six doorways for our classroom, um, that would allow us to move people in and out faster. If I had 1.2 doorways per classroom, it'd be kind of like it is now. So instead of having one big cell, you have enough little cells to take up the same exact amount of space and you still have a high surface area to volume ratio. So you can move things in and out faster into each of these individual cells and meet its needs than you can move from all the way on the outside of this big cell and get that material all the way into the middle of the cell where it might be needed. So this limits cells and cell size. This is a big deal and here's why We've never just found really big cells that are, that, that's not common. In fact, it's un, very uncommon. The, the, the real standard is to have really, really small cells. We've looked at some cells in our class. They're small and there's a really good reason. And this is one of those primary reasons. Is cells have to be small to be able to move things in and out fast enough to meet the needs of the cell. It's just a physical limitation. Okay. So we've been talking a little bit about, you know, cells and cell replication and like, you know, the, the, the things that regulate a cell's life cycle. Uh, this is called the cell cycle. And I want to take a little bit of a look at this with you. And we're going to start right here at this first growth phase. So whenever I make a new cell, right, so let's say maybe it's a skin cell or down here in the in the stratum germinatum in my bottom layer of skin in my hand, and I make a cell, okay, it's gonna go through its normal growth phase. Okay, it's gonna act like a normal cell. It's gonna do what it's supposed to do. Normal metabolic roles. Then, once it reaches, gets old enough, it will reach a stage where it will be ready to replicate. Now, this will only do this if this cell itself is gonna further divide. Some cells don't. Um, some cells, when they're made, they're mature, and that's it, like nerve cells. Then they, they stop there. They're just like, okay, I'm just going to do my job. They're never going to replicate actively at a certain point. Some cells are very active in replication. So then they're going to go through this, what we call S phase, instead of the first growth phase, the synthesis phase, and they're going to synthesize their DNA. They need to synthesize their DNA because when that cell splits, each copy of the cell that's being made has to have a full copy of DNA. You can't just split and not divide, make more DNA for the next cell copy. You'd end up with cells which only had parts of the genetic information that needed. So this is a short phase, but it's pretty important called the synthesis phase or S phase where you make a copy of your DNA. Then if you are going to go ahead and divide, um, you're going to go through a second growth phase where you replicate your organelles. You go ahead and grow a little bit more, and that's preparing the cell to go ahead and split up and split that cytoplasm, all that material inside the cell, into two new cells. This is the second growth phase of the G2. Now, all of this, these phases, the G1, S, and G2 that I've just mentioned, are part of what we call interphase. Interphase is like normal cell life. Like that's like it's normal life. It's what it does. It doesn't really, it's not that big a deal um, for the cell. It's always still doing what it's supposed to be doing. But then it hits this odd set here, this M phase or the mitotic phase. This is when you're actually doing the dividing, right? And this is the part that we have to pay attention to. And the reason we have to is this is when you divide up the nucleus of the cell. Now we know that in eukaryotic organisms, there's this big fat nucleus, it's full of genetic information. Um, humans, for example, have 46 chromosomes worth of genetic information. And we have to make sure that we do this right and that all our new cells that we make have those exact same 46 chromosomes worth of information. Otherwise, it's not going to work right. So this is the important part that we really want to focus on next time is the whole mitotic phase or the mitosis part of this, right? And then once you're done with that mitosis part of this, you end up with two new cells and they can all go through these 
normal stages of the cell cycle. So all the stages of interphase and then my, the mitotic phase, an interphase and the mitotic phase. And in each time you go through the G1, S, G2 phase as you're going through interphase. So that way you can get ready for more cell division. Okay, let me just show you real quick before we go. Here is an image of mitosis in some epithelial cells. So that'd be like some skin cells. I'm gonna hit play here and this what happens quick. Oop, that was it. Okay, now this is mitosis, right? Mitosis is dividing up the, the nucleus. And so what you see here, the red part is your DNA in this. And the whole purpose of my, the mitotic phase is to do this right here, divvy up the DNA correctly. So we've got all our DNA, it's all wrapped up, pulled apart. Now, at that point, it's going to form two new cell. Two new nuclei for the for the next two cells that it has. Okay, and that's what we're going to go ahead and look at next time.